Welcome to the Happy Black Woman Podcast, where we're on a mission to empower women to transform their lives through personal development and entrepreneurship. We bring you all the information, inspiration, and motivation you need to create a life of happiness, success, and freedom. Now, please welcome your host, the happy black woman herself, Rosetta Thurman. Hello, ladies, and welcome back to the Happy Black Woman Podcast. I'm Rosetta, and I am really, really excited to bring to you another great conversation. Today's guest is Morgan DeBon, founder of Blavity, and you may already have seen their websites and followed them on Instagram, and today we get to speak to the woman behind it all. Welcome, Morgan. Thank you. So excited to be here. So excited to have you. You know, for everyone listening, this is one of those those conversations where I have never met the person before. <laughs> We've had um, several of those lately because I like to ask other people like, who should we have on the show and pe- different names get thrown around. And so Morgan's was one of those. And it's like, hey, you know, did you know that you know, the person behind Blavity? I'm like, no, but I've heard of Blavity. And, and so that's what this interview is. And so it's fun. These are fun for me because I get to ask the questions that I want to know because I don't know the person. So it's like, let's meet on my podcast and record our conversation in front of everybody. That's kind of what this this is today. And so it's going to be fun for me and hopefully fun for you guys to listen in because Blavity has really blown up just a very short period of time. So Morgan, for everyone who has not seen the website, can you tell us a little bit about what it is? Yeah, so Blavity is a media company and really a lifestyle brand at this point for Mm -hmm. Black millennials. So we create content and experiences all kind of around this idea, like how do we help build our community, build connections, make sure people have fun online and offline. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So lifestyle brand, huge online presence. I think I first saw the Blavity brand on Instagram. So, you know, Instagram based on the people that you follow, I'm on as happy black woman. And so a lot of the suggestions of people to follow are, you know, people who run websites catering to black women. And so that came up and I was like, oh, I I clicked on it, looked at the pictures. I was like, this looks pretty cool. You know, I wonder Mm -hmm. what they're doing. And, you know, started following and then went to the website and then saw that you guys were also having events. And so just really got curious about, man, you know, this, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of followers (laughs) and I'm always curious about what's behind that, especially when you're building a brand like we are, you know, catered to a specific group of people because there's a lot of websites out there. So tell us, how did you get started? Again, this is me. This is Rosetta getting to be nosy on her own podcast. So I want to know, how did you even have the idea to start the website? Did it start as a website? Was it something else? How did Blavity come to be and how did you become the person to lead it? Yeah, so I started Blavity when I was still working at Intuit. So my background's actually in tech in Silicon Valley, which is why we really run this company like in your true kind of startup stereotypical way. Like we're very lean. We think really quickly. um, We move fast. We don't really harp on our mistakes, but just keep making progress. And that mentality is something that, you know, I learned living in the Bay Area for three years and working across different companies within Intuit from TurboTax to some small business products because they own QuickBooks and and other products. And and one of the things that I saw when I was there was nobody was applying this kind of mentality of designing products and using technology for people of color and black people specifically, like name me a Facebook for black people, right? I mean, black planet, perhaps old school, but there's no new version of that. And there's, there's not necessarily a group of people in the Bay Area thinking about, or a large group of people in the Bay Area thinking about how do we solve problems that are unique to people of color and and Black people. So, Mm -hmm. you know, through that kind of process and thinking, you know, I also realized that for me, I have a non-technical background. So I needed to, whatever it was that I was going to create, needed to be something that I could personally be a domain expert in Mm -hmm. and something that at least while we're getting started. Now, Blavity in the future is going to be very technical, but Blavity day one needed to be something that I could do myself and something that people would be like, "Hmm, you're not an engineer. Why are you building an app? Right? So the first version of the product actually was an email newsletter. And we just used MailChimp, super simple. And it sent out your top black videos that you needed to watch that week. Mm -hmm. And this was back when like, 
Upworthy was a thing and, and BuzzFeed was all over your feed. Things have changed a lot now. And this yeah. is before Facebook really had like native video. You can really channel those those old days <laughs> four years ago. So when was this? What year did you officially start? Like you sent out the first email about, you know, your top black videos. July 2014. Wow. Yeah. Well, actually, the emails were a little bit before that. So probably May 2014. Mm-hmm. And then we launched, then we built an actual website. So I brought on my one of my good friends who was an engineer, Jeff, and we built the first version of the website and launched it in my parents' basement in, in Nashville. And yeah, it bombed. Like nobody, nobody cared. <laughs> like most things. Right. And, you know, we just kept building from there. And, and Jonathan and Aaron, my other two co-founders now joined the team. And we iterated on the product, made a different version of the site. You know, we thought maybe it was too ugly, but it was still the right solution. Turns out it was ugly and it was the wrong solution. <laughs> and so I actually built like a WordPress blog over the weekend, one weekend, thinking that we need to do content marketing to drive traffic to the main website. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the blog was getting more traffic than the main site. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we continued to pivot and iterate on, on the Blavity that, you know, now people see today and went through a lot of changes in between, you know, three years ago and, and now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So three years ago to now, tell us what Blavity is now. So Blavity now is kind of taking life of its own. It's really fun. So we have three brands. We have Blavity, which is the main one that most people know about. We have a website for Blavity and we have a daily newsletter that goes out to around 100,000 people. It's very newsy, but also very fun and conversational. And so we cover topics like tech. We cover topics like news, politics, what's going on in pop culture. What are the latest memes about? What's trending on black Twitter? What TV shows are happening? And we also have a huge user-generated content community. So a lot of our our actual content on the website, and this is where the tech aspect comes in, is sent in through our platform. So we built our own intellectual property and our own content management system so that our audience could use the Blavity.com platform to create their own content and use us as a distribution platform. So that's a lot of what we do at Blavity. And then we just launched a few months ago, 2190, which is a women's brand. So that's literally all about health and wellness and beauty and hair and it's kind of like a young hip version of a lot of things. But basically, it's it's super cute. We have a daily email newsletter for that. And then we have a corresponding conference, which was Empower Her, which will eventually be kind of rebranded as the 2190 conference next year. And then the third brand we just acquired this year, this amazing company called Shadow and Act. And Shadow and Act's been around for eight years. So it's been it's been here for a minute. Mm-hmm. And they're focused on the entertainment and Hollywood world and basically cover like all the new directors. Like they would have covered Barry before Barry, you know, blew up with Moonlight and do interviews and get all the kind of exclusive trailers and things like that. So it's a huge brand here in LA, as well as kind of any filmmakers or upcoming web series. It's a great place to kind of discover new creatives. And so that's been a cool addition to the team. And then the fourth thing is Afrotech, which is our tech brand. So we have an annual tech conference called Afrotech, which is in San Francisco. So that's all about like the innovators and tech CEOs and a lot of really cool people who've raised millions of dollars and people say there's no black people in tech. And I'm like, I've got a thousand of them <laughs> and there are and many, many more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, that's, that's the cliff notes version about what we are and what we do. That was a really great rundown. I mean, for people who just know the blavity, I was just going on the site on my phone and it's, it's the, it says, it, this is the blackest thing to hit your inbox, you know, join a hundred thousand, <laughs> you know, millennials. And it's very interesting for people to hear because we talk about platform, we talk about brands, but to really see like what, how it started with, you know, a MailChimp email list. And now there's a hundred thousand you know, people on the list that are receiving these updates and whatever else that you are sharing, you know, so having people come to events and things like that is great. I mean, a lot of people think that they have to have a product product like for sale or a service for sale. And you are really doing some amazing things with a platform, having a platform of people really allows you to do some really cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so when you think about what it's taken for you, 
to build this, I mean, you know, you guys can go to the website and see what kind of content is there. Number one, I guess the back end of everything people want to know, like if you want to start, if someone wants to build a brand, like, you know, Happy Black Woman is a brand, but it started out as me, as Rosetta. And, you know, now mm-hmm. it's a Happy Black Woman brand and we're having events and workshops and retreats and all these different things that extend it from the brand. So I am a true believer that branding is really, really important in building a brand and a platform so you can do other things. But behind the scenes, how do you guys actually make money from a platform? Yeah. Because so many of our listeners are bloggers. They have blogs. They have aspirations of being an author or speaker to really get their message out, to get their knowledge out. So many of our Black women are talented. We're just born with Black girl magic. We all know that. <laughs> and so many of us want to you know, learn how to monetize that magic. But they have websites already. They may have a blog already or a Facebook page. Like what's what's behind the scenes of how you actually make money once you have some type of platform? Yeah. I mean, I think there's lots of ways to make money. I, I'm a huge fan of trying like thousands and thousands of ways to monetize because the more lines of revenue that you have, the less dependent you are on mm-hmm. one thing. Mm-hmm. And particularly for us, like as a black media company, black startup, we cannot rely on other people. <laughs> like, right. We have to make sure that we don't got a business. Blavity is too important. And, you know, I think what we do is, is important in terms of just like pushing the culture forward. And I would even say in the last three years, like because we've covered certain things, other people start covering them. And, and it, it's, it's a great it's a great way to make sure that people are being held accountable. Mm. So to mm-hmm. me, because because it's important that we don't go out of business, we're actually pretty conservative when it comes to spending and managing our cash flow. So, you know, I check check all of our financials every day and what we do to make money is it's just a variety of things. We have, of course, the two conferences, Afrotech and Empower Her. Those have tickets. <laughs> People mm-hmm. pay for those tickets. Mm-hmm. And then we have sponsors who would like to reach this audience, mm-hmm. right? The Black female audience or the Black tech audience. And so that's a huge part of our revenue. We have just standard native content. We've made videos. We've made videos for the IRS. We've made videos for car companies we've made videos for i mean you name it we've done it mm-hmm. so and that's what you call sponsored content yeah so it's like native content mm-hmm. yeah i mean i feel like the industry has like a thousand words for these things right right but <laughs> it's like sponsored that we do both so like sponsored content is like content we would do regardless but it's like brought to you by you know toyota mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then there's kind of just like native content, which is our normal content, which maybe weaves into the storylines, different brands or different conversations that people want us to talk about. So yeah, so we have native and branded content and then display ads, banner ads, you know, those are pretty standard. We have those in our newsletter and we just have a lot of, we have a sh- uh, e-commerce shop that doesn't really do very well, but it's still really fun to mm-hmm. have, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we're always trying different things. You know, it's never finished. Right. Right. I love that. And, you know, I we we don't always get a chance to get into the technical nitty gritty on the show. So I'm glad that we do get the chance to because people see a brand or a platform and there's all these misconceptions about what's going on. And then if someone else wants to do it, they might try it. And OK, you know, Morgan said, go and start, a, you know, a MailChimp and, you know, a WordPress blog. And I did it, but nothing happened. Like and I want right. people to I, especially, you know, my happy black women to know the reality behind the scenes so that, you know, if you have that desire to have your own brand, your own platform, that you know what it's going to take to actually monetize it and make it your main thing that you do. So conferences, you've got the content. I'm curious to know because a lot of people want to do that too, but they have like a hundred readers and, Mm -hmm. you know, nobody wants to pay to get access to a hundred readers. So what was the tipping point for you when you realized that, wow, there are companies that will be willing to sponsor the content for this amazing tribe that we've built. Like what was, was there a certain number? Was there a certain level of traffic that you had to have? What was it where you're you're like, oh, you've got, you know, IRS wanting you to make videos and and all these brands. So I guess for me, based off of conversations with different people, I mean, Blavity, for the first year, we did not try to monetize. So let me, let me be clear. Like the first year, it was all about, are we making something that matters? Mm-hmm. Like if Blavity went away, would people be like, damn, where'd Blavity go? Mm-hmm. You know, like literally if I deleted all of our Twitter accounts, all of our Facebook pages, mm-hmm. all of our Instagram, stop sending the daily newsletter, stop writing content every day, would people care or not? And so we had to get to a point where, where the answer was like, yeah, people would be like, whoa, 
something feels off here. What did we do before Flappy? You know, that feeling and that emotion is the most important thing to me and to our entire company. Everything we do is, is kind of shaded by that idea of how do we create experience where people love us so much that they feel like it's it's natural and we should have already have always been here and this should have always existed. And once you get that feeling with your target audience and your your community, then you know that you can sell things, right? You know that brands are going to want to be associated with that because it's real. And even though we may not have 30 million monthly unique visitors like some of our other competitors claim mm-hmm. they do, we can say we have real people who love us and they mm-hmm. will tell you about it and you can just look on our Instagram and then, and that sells, you know, that, that is influence and that sells. Yeah. That's a great point to make because a lot of people think it's just about numbers. And we say the same thing with our happy black woman community, you know, because a lot of people want to come and sponsor and be a part of it because they see, especially when they come to our live events, the engagement that we have with people. And so I think it's a great point to make, For people who are thinking, well, I have to wait until I get to, you know, 180,000 Instagram followers, you know, to to really do something with this. And that's not, it sounds like that wasn't the case for you guys. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I want to get into some strategies that our ladies can take away. You know, for, for those of you who are building this brand, wherever you are on your journey, what would be some strategies that you could share with us that you use to build it up? Because, you know, you went, you went somewhere, something happened between, you know, starting that MailChimp and, you know, getting the the blog up and writing the content to where you guys are today to even be able to have conferences and things like that. So for someone building a brand now, what would Mm -hmm. be the main three things for instance, that we would need to keep our eye on or work on or implement? I think that there's a need for speed and failing fast. I see a lot of people who take too long to launch. And then when they launch, they just kind of sit and wait. And it's like, you need to iterate very quickly. I mean, we have so many failures under our belts, way more failures and successes, but it doesn't matter because we have, we keep moving. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs and and sometimes women, and I'm guilty of this myself, like we perseverate and we're afraid of public failure, but it really is kind of like a, a false way. It tricks your brain and makes you risk adverse. And so, so that'd be my first thing is like fail fast, move quickly. Two is believe in yourself and believe in yourself so much that you don't actually need to be listening to so many people's advice. I think a lot of people are like, let me talk to like these 17 people that have done something similar to me or what I want to do. And let me have an informational coffee with them. And like, let me read all of their blogs. And like, come on, no, like you don't want to be that person. You want to be you Mm -hmm. and you want to be successful. Like they're successful, but it needs to be your version of that. And oftentimes I think that people try to emulate others and and then it, it, they wind up only being maybe marginally better than that person when really you want to do something that looks like so different, so out there mm-hmm. that no one else can duplicate you. Like this, your brand, your tribe, the happy black woman is amazing. And it's because it's, there's nothing else like it. So if you were like, I want to make a similar, it, it just wouldn't work, right? It's because mm-hmm. it's unique. So mm-hmm. I'd say like, don't listen to too much advice just trust your gut, believe in yourself and keep pushing. Mm. I mean, it's so amazing that that's like the best advice. (laughs) You know, it's like the advice nobody wants to hear. So I know, you know, our ladies listening are like, okay, really? (laughs) I want to know. But, but it's so true. And that's, these are the conversations I love to get into on the podcast because, you know, you guys are hearing from someone who has been successful. And when you look back at your success, you know, it's not, where you, you know, try to emulate someone else. But when you created something, like when people, when I saw the name, I was like, what's Blavity? <laughs> that was the first <laughs> exactly. thing that I said, like, like what? what is that? <laughs> and and that's a good thing. Like when people hear Happy Black Woman, it's like, you know, some people are like, do those even exist? Like I see the comments <laughs> that people make on social media. There's no such thing as a Happy Black Woman. Well, why don't you, you know, come to the website, come to an event, join us and find out, you know, if that's true right. or not. It's, there's a curiosity to it. But I think that it's hard for women, especially Black women, to trust that what we have is enough for someone to, so it's kind of like, well, let's see what this other person did. And I, 
I think it's important to have people who inspire us, but not, you know, you, you can't emulate. There's so much, <laughs> I'm thinking of Solange now, you know, her, her mm-hmm. sing at the table album and, you know, the Junie, you know, we have so much black girl magic, you know, you can have it, you know, it's like black girl magic to me is a renewable resource. It's not finite. It's not limited. It just right. keeps producing. Keeps <laughs> so um, there is more than enough that we all have. And I just love that you brought that up, that it's important to be yourself because that is what sells. That's what creates the brand because it isn't like anything else. And I just encourage everybody to create something that people go, what is that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. I think my last, I, my last one, like my number three would be to really move quickly. I think that's, you know, I said fail fast as my first one and, and two is believe in yourself and three is like move fast because I just think it makes a big difference versus people who like sit and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and then launch mm-hmm. and then wait and then wait and then wait and wait. And it's like, no, like keep going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People need to think about that as well. Yeah. I think that's like, it seems like a very big difference between like tech companies or people who've been in Silicon Valley or, or in the Bay area I've noticed so much difference between like, I don't want to make this an East coast, West coast thing, but there's a different cadence, a different rhythm to entrepreneurship in certain industries. And I think that it's difficult for women who, who did, don't have that background, like didn't work for, like if you worked for a large corporation and you kind of see how things work, then you can take that into your business. But for mm-hmm. women who are starting in, they're like, you know, they work for the government, <laughs> you know, the bureaucratic, you know, whatever, you kind of take th- taking that into your business, you know, because that's what you've learned. That's what you know. Like, how does someone learn how to go fast when they're, they're used to going slow in their career? And it's like, when it comes to their own thing, they feel like they need to talk to all the people and do all the research. There's so many researchers listening. That's why I'm asking this question is, Mm -hmm. you know, how do you learn how to go fast? Oh, that's such a great question. I think you just have to push yourself. I don't know if there's really like a, a, a methodology that teaches you. I mean, you can read books, but that kind of goes against my previous advice, which is just like, just go. Mm, mm-hmm. I think having accountability partners and surrounding yourselves with, with other women and other business owners who are also moving mm-hmm. and pushing quickly yeah. and aiming and thinking big. Yeah. I think that's been really helpful for me. Cause like when I see my other friends launch something, like when I see them, like is going to a new country or I see like Levy's writing a book. I'm like, man, like where's my book at? Like mm-hmm. we need to be international mm-hmm. or, you know, I see, friends with Abiola from OK Africa and he's like doing this all this dope stuff in like South Africa and I'm like yeah like when I'm going to Africa y'all <laughs> <You know? laughs> and I think that motivates it personally that motivates me to keep thinking bigger and mm-hmm. to keep executing yeah you know I'm competitive by nature right I think a lot of entrepreneurs are and so like having that friendly and healthy like what are you working on what are you doing oh my yeah. god that's awesome right I think is really helpful to not being stagnant Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, it's kind of like if if I were to rephrase what you said based on the conversation about going fast, it's like if you want to go fast, you've got to surround yourself with fast people (laughs) instead of, you know, Mm -hmm. people who are slow and they're like, you know, I know there's so many people, you know, women listening and they're like, well, I don't have those people, you know, actually my people are asking, are you sure that's a good idea? You know, are you sure you should take out that loan to, you know, pay for those Facebook ads and get people to your website? There's so many things that what I call normal people would not do or understand the reason behind why you're doing it because you have the bigger vision. And so I do think that's such a great reminder that if you surround yourself with people who are also doing those things and even at a higher level than you are you really can't help but move forward because you know they're the kind of people who are going to ask you hey what's what's going on Morgan I thought you said you were going to Africa Mm -hmm. (laughs) when are you going to Africa Mm -hmm. right or they will also invite you along and help you that's what I love about you know knowing so many black women entrepreneurs is like there's opportunities that they know about or have that you may not have found on your own. But when you talk to people and you get into these communities, it's like, oh, so-and-so is looking for a speaker or, you know, so-and-so is looking for a partner for this or let's partner on this. And it just opens up a whole new world for you. So surround yourself with those people. is really important. And I know people are like, well, how do I, you know, get connected with those types of people? 
I think we all have our own stories. How did you get connected to such amazing people, Morgan? I think, so when I was younger, I switched schools a bit when I was in so elementary school, and then I switched middle schools, and then I switched from middle school to different high school, like different groups of, like friend groups of people. Actually, I switched middle school twice. And I'm from St. Louis and St. Louis is a pretty segregated city. So when you switch schools, you literally go from like black to white and then black to black and then back to white. And it's just like a lot. And I went to black church, but I lived in the suburbs where they like commuted to the city every day, went to school in the city. And I think having to code switch so much and be around so many different types of people, I learned how to be open Mm. to everyone. And I learned how to like still be myself and and, and yet still adapt to whatever environment that I was in um, and make myself available for new friends mm-hmm. and to not necessarily be intimidating because I'm the new girl or like whatever, right? So I think through that process, like I've always seemed to find really strong and amazing people near me and have always been open to building relationships with them and worked to build relationships with them. Like when I moved to the Bay Area, I didn't know anybody, you know, I didn't know anyone besides my now co-founder and my brother. And and now I have amazing sister friends for, that live in the Bay still, despite the fact that I live in LA now. And and yeah, they just hold me accountable and I hold them accountable and hit them up like, yeah, what's that? What are we working on? When are we going on this trip? So I think that it, it takes work to to have people around you and to have people really be honest and root for you. Mm-hmm. Not just the like, oh, hey, how's, how's it going? Like, looks like everything's going great. Bye. Like, no, <laughs> like that's not enough. You know, that's yeah. not real. Yeah. I do totally agree that it's worth it to put in the work for those relationships. And you don't need a lot. That's the thing that a lot of people don't get either. Like you don't need a whole entourage, <laughs> you know, to support, you know, behind you, but you do need, you know, some good people and it's worth it to put in. And whether that means that you need to go outside of your comfort zone and go to some of these different conferences that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. So you can meet people. If you're paying for a conference and, you know, a hundred other people are paying for a conference, they're probably the kind of people that you want around you because they're motivated. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, Morgan, I I know we have a little bit of time left. I want to get into you as the entrepreneur, the Black woman entrepreneur who's running this and building this. There's a lot of moving parts (laughs) to what Mm -hmm. you're doing. So (laughs) how do you stay focused and productive and not lose you? Yeah. I don't know if I've always been good at that. I mean, I think the first two years of Blavity, I was in grind survival mode. Like I was not playing around with anybody. And, you know, if you were a distraction, you had got to go, like literally. And, and that even included people in my personal life, you know? And, you know, at the end of the day, like we we are where we are because of the hard work put in by me and the rest of the team in the first two years, but it's not sustainable. Like that level of intensity it's not sustainable. And I think I've had to be intentional about transitioning my personal lifestyle so that it is a sustainable lifestyle so that I can be healthy and I can be focused and I can make complex decisions that now have huge impacts. You know, if you have no employees, you're mm-hmm. your only employee, you make a mistake, mm-hmm. you know, the only paycheck you're hurting is yours. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it's like, yeah, like this decision's big, but ultimately it's not really affecting that many people. Now, if I make a mistake, I got 20 paychecks to worry about, right? And and all the people that those paychecks help mm-hmm. and feed. So I need to, like now I'm, I'm really focused on making sure that I have the mental space and the mental capacity to focus on the big things that matter in a way that, you know, there are no excuses for mistakes at this level because, because the impact is significant and the consequences are much larger. So I work on more recently, like my physical health, you know, working out in the mornings, changing my my physical environment, making sure my apartment looks nice and that it's clean and that I have food in the fridge. I mean, this all sound like really silly, small things, but it really helps me personally have like a clear mind or my office. Like I, I didn't have an office. You know, we have a nice office now and it has space and people can breathe. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think just kind of getting out of that like struggle boat mentality, which we were definitely in for a minute, it has given me personally like the mental capacity and, and the health to be able to be a better leader at this level. Yeah, those are so 
important and yet so easy to overlook, especially when you're in grind mode. And I, and I honor the grind, you know, I think oh, yeah. that I'm about the grind, we're still grinding. <laughs> you have to go through a certain period of, of grind and hustle to get something off the ground, to make it something <laughs> that, that could be, you know, monetized. And I think we all go through, you know, we've had so many interviews on the podcast of, you know, the point where you realize that if, if I'm going to continue, I got to take care of me. You know, I got to take a vacation. I got to make sure that my house is not in disarray. I got to maybe get an assistant, things that you, that you don't necessarily realize when you're, when you're in the grind. And then you realize, you know, <laughs> my nails haven't been done in months. <laughs> Absolutely right. You only get your hair done and you got to go speak somewhere. You know, it, it just, it, you start to realize. And I love asking people this question because I want, everyone to know what goes into being the kind of woman that can run a company like this. It's not like you just wake up like this and you just, everything works out smoothly, but there's certain things that have to happen so that you can show up. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I know that you know a lot about the tech. So are there any tools or apps that you use to keep everything uh, organized for yourself? I'm a minimalist, honestly. So I'm like Google Calendar, my life, email, filters, Slack. That's about it. And my moleskin. All right. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Yeah. I, I definitely think my secret weapon is probably my Google Calendar. Mm-hmm. I schedule every single minute, yeah. like everything from wake up to work out, to meditate, to eat, to dinner to, I, I literally have a thing at seven o'clock that says rest, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. because it pings me, right? It like it, even if I'm not going to rest because I have five other things to do, mm-hmm. I get a notification on my phone. I get a notification on my screen and it says rest. And I'm like, okay, I have to make a conscious decision right now. Mm-hmm. Am I going to am rest? Gonna rest? Yeah. <laughs> or am I not going to rest? Yeah. You know, or am I going to work out or am I going to sit in this bed? Like right. I have to make that choice. And and so by setting those intentions and it for being on my calendar, my calendar is transparent. So mm. everyone in the company knows exactly what I'm doing every mm. single moment of the day. Yeah. Like no meetings are, are unlisted. Every single thing is open. So mm. people know, I think too, that helps me be accountable. Like if I'm not showing up, they're like, oh, you didn't have any meetings this morning. Like, where are you at? <laughs> you know, right. we thought you were going to be here by night. Yeah. You know, and that helps me stay organized and it helps me stay on a routine and on, on a cadence as well. Yeah. I love that you have, you know, a reminder on your phone to rest. I like the iPhone sleep. Like, you know, I, I say what time I want to go to sleep. And then it's like, it. dang, you have to you have to go to sleep in an hour. It gives me an hour kind of wind down. And I'm like, OK, I got to I got to get my sleep in. So exactly. that changed my life. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, you're only going to sleep for five hours. You're like, hmm, something about this is not adding up. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I love it. And how we can use these tools to really honor the goals that we have for our ourselves. Well, Morgan, I can't let you go without getting a book recommendation from you. So is there a book you can share with us that has inspired you along your journey? Oh, hmm. I read like everything. So let's see the seven irrefutable laws of leadership. I mean, it's a classic, but it's, it's, it is a classic for a reason. Like that one, how to win friends and influence people. I mean, all those business book classics that, that you kind of hear of, I think yeah. are important. And I read them on a yearly basis because yeah. sometimes you get in that grind mode and then you look up and you're like, I haven't been nice to people, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I haven't been saying thank you. Yeah. I haven't been really actually asking about people's stories and what they do outside of work. Like I need to do better. Right. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, so, so kind of the, the lean startup methodology by Eric Ries and there's a new one a new startup book that I haven't read yet that I'm going to probably read next. But yeah, there's, there's so many. Mm, those are great recommendations. It's like we've got our happy black woman book list going and I love the startup kind of books because I think a lot of people, they don't do the reading until after mm-hmm. <laughs> they have some challenges. So it's good to, you know, read them in the beginning. Well, I am so honored that you were able to take the time to be with us today. And I know that so many women are going to want to stay in touch with you, Morgan. So where can they go to stay connected? I'm everywhere. So you, the best way is probably Instagram. My Insta story, like every day, everything from I'm in the gym, to I'm in the office, we're doing this meeting, I got this client thing, I'm asleep, I'm taking a nap, everything. So 
Instagram, which is just my first name, last name at Morgan Devon. And then I would also say check out, if you haven't heard of some of our other brands, definitely check those out. Check out 2190, check out Shadow and Act, and let me know what you think. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Morgan. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. And hopefully this is not the last time we get to chat. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. All right, ladies, there you have it. Wonderful interview with Morgan DeBond from Blavity. And if you'd like to check out our previous episodes, all you have to do is go to our website, happyblackwoman.com, click the podcast tab, and a wealth of information is at your fingertips all for free. I will talk to you all very, very soon. In the meantime, do something today that makes you happy. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us on the Happy Black Woman podcast. If you want all the show's notes from today's episode, go to happyblackwomanpodcast.com. Plus, we'll send you a copy of Rosetta's free life mapping workbook. We look forward to empowering you next time. And until then, do something this week that makes you happy.